Welcome to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. Today I'm going to do a test of this EcoFlow Delta Pro power bank that I've put up in the back of the hatch of this travel trailer. I'm going to plug it in and uh, see what it tells me as far as how long I have to run on different types of things that I would be using in and around the travel trailer. If you haven't seen the other video before I installed this outlet, go ahead and check that out in the playlist. And it plugs in the cord here. This one I just plug in right here. The primary thing that we're going to be using this for when we're boondocking is to keep the refrigerator running. So we're going to try that first. We're also going to take a look at the a uh, small space heater and also the coffee pot that's important but the main thing is to see how long this says that it will run with just the refrigerator powered up everything's plugged in and right now there is no draw on this that's because there's nothing turned on in the travel trailer so let me go on in and turn on the uh, refrigerator all right, I've got some lights on in here just so we can see the controls on the refrigerator. All right, it's on four, that's our normal setting. Here, kick on. So the refrigerator is powered up and running, it's all closed. So let's see, let's see what that says on our Delta Pro outside in terms of how long we can run it on just that load. Oh, I'm going to turn these lights back off. All right, so that's drawing 65 watts, and it says we've got one day. Now, there's no decimal points on that. It could be 24, 25 hours. Uh, anything over 24 hours just starts counting in days. Uh, so... I, and I don't know what the rounding is on this. I don't know if if one day could be anything up to one day and plus 12 hours. I don't know if that's the rounding point when it goes from one day to two days. So I guess we'll have to see. Let me get a reading right now. It's, it's just past noon. So I'm going to let this run for a while. And we'll check back in and see how long it takes before that one day turns down into a 23 hour runtime. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, so this is what I was hoping we would see. Now it says two days. And so what has happened is that the refrigerator has cooled down to the set temperature. And once it does that, it doesn't need to keep running constantly anymore so it's going to continue on in the uh, on and off cycle as the thermostat requires so now uh, we've got 97 percent and it's 130 so it's been about an hour and a half and instead of counting down from the one day that it showed originally now it's showing two days worth so that's looking like a lot more uh, reasonable or uh, workable solution for off-grid to where you only need to worry about replenishing this charge every couple of days if all you're doing is running your refrigerator to keep your food cold. Most of our boondocking isn't more than one night. Our, our most common use for this thing is going to be when we're on a long leg of a road trip, like if we have more than a full day's drive between points of interest, and we just want to pull into a rest area or a truck stop and shut the vehicle off, climb in here, get some sleep, and then get up the next morning, make a cup of coffee, and get back on the road. And during that time, we don't want to have to worry about the refrigerator going warm. So even eight hours is kind of stretching it. Occasionally, we'll go into some remote area where I want to do some fly fishing or there's a waterfall we want to hike to, for example, and we might want to stay for a couple of days. But beyond that, most of our stays are going to be at state park campgrounds or at private campgrounds like a KOA. So if this thing is going to last for 48 hours just running the refrigerator, that's going to be more than enough for 
99% of what we're going to ask it to do for us. So this is looking good so far. So there we go. Let's keep an eye on it and see how it goes a little bit later today. It's been five hours now. Activate the screen, so how we're doing. Okay, we're down to 90%. So I think it was 130 when I checked it last. 130, it was at 97%. So we've lost another 7% in the last three and a half hours. And it's showing two days still. So uh, the 90% has a lot more meaningful information in it right now. Uh, so if five hours took it down 10%, well, at that rate, that's um, 45 hours left, so that's just shy of two days. So, yeah, that that seems to add up. All right, well, that's, uh, that's looking good so far. I like that. Uh, I'm going to let it set here and run until we get down to 20% just to exercise the battery bank. But I'll, I'll show it again when we get to that point, if not before. All right, now. All right let's turn it on here and see what we're doing. We're at eight hours. And that's at 84%. So let's do the math here. We got 84%. We've used 16% in eight hours. Yeah, going down about 2% per hour. So 100% at 2% an hour would be 50 hours. So we're still right there in the, the two-day range. So that's looking good. It doesn't seem like it's accelerating at all. In fact, if anything, it might be using less. Well, it's it's uh, nighttime now. It's 8 o'clock. And uh, it's colder in the pole barn. So it's taking less energy to keep that refrigerator cold inside there. This is probably not the greatest time of year to be de testing something like this, a, a cooling system. The air conditioner, I can't even test it here because the compressor won't kick on, it's so cold. This is like the easiest possible situation for this Delta Pro to keep the refrigerator running is when it's 40 degrees in the pole barn. Uh, I'm gonna leave it overnight and check it in the morning. All right, 10.30 in the morning. It's been uh, 22 and a half hours. Now we're at 56%, and it's showing one day. So that's tracking pretty well. That um, when it was at 100%, it said, well, at 97% was the first that we saw it actually say two days. That was after it took 3% to bring the refrigerator down to its stable condition. Uh, after that, we're actually a little bit ahead of the game, so that, that two-day reading must have had a few hours tacked onto it that we couldn't see because of the rounding. Because now we're at one day and it's at 56%, but it's uh, it seems to be a fairly linear drop um, on percent versus time here. So I'm happy with that. Now it's showing one day, still 42%. So that ain't bad. It's still showing a, more than 24 hours, and it's well under half. So it's going to end up being more than the two days that it originally showed. So there had to have been some two days plus. It is uh, six... 30 hours, 30 hours into it so far, and we're at 42%. I'm liking this, and I don't see any reason for that assessment to change between now and when this gets down to 20%. All right, it's been about 45 hours. Let's see where we're at. Okay, we got 13% left been 45 hours it says we're down to eight hours remaining uh, that's not so bad it looks like it's teetering between eight and nine hours left there so it's right on the right on the edge I was gonna catch this at 20 percent but I, I decided to let it run all night just to see if I could make the 48 hours which was the two-day estimate and it did that with a little room to spare here and I'm not down to 
danger zone on my battery depletion so it was a good exercise cycle to take it from 100 down to 13 now I'm gonna shut things off and let it charge back up but I think that this is uh, well if, if nothing else it's a good test showing that that it's a, a pretty reliable number on the time remaining as you use it you at least aren't going to be surprised by the rate at which it's going down because it's going to keep refreshing that number as your conditions and your loads change. My conclusion on this test is that this device is certainly worth the space and the weight that it's taking up here. It's not going to be something that provides you with unlimited electric power during an extended boondocking session. Uh, I do think that going forward what I'm going to do next is make some accommodation for being able to charge this in the hold here from the 80 watt solar panel that came standard on the roof of this travel trailer. Uh, down the road I would very much like to install additional solar panels on the empty space still available on the roof of this and if I could have I don't know 600 watts 800 watts maybe if I position them just right uh, that would be that would go a long ways towards extending the life on this thing. So uh, future solar panel array on the roof of this thing seems like something that I ought to have on my to-do list. In the meantime, it's a it's a very good addition to the kit. Seeing how long I can run the refrigerator has taken up more than enough of your time for one video. I'm going to put a separate video out there with the. Uh, test showing the space heater and running the coffee pot so come on back if you're interested in that be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll get a notification when i post that video but we're going to cut this one off now thanks a lot for watching have a great day